All right. Thank you, sir. Let's call the FNA committee to order. Uh, clerk, please uh, note attendance. And um, I will entertain a motion to excuse Councilor Mayhew. Uh, no, he's actually online. He needs he to be promoted. Now? We're all accounted for. Well, see, well, there he once is. He's beamed in. I'm here, but I'm not allowed to start my video. So the system administrator has not allowed me to start my video, but I am here. Okay. All right, good. All council members are in attendance. Please note other uh, attendance as necessary. We'll move on uh, with the agenda. Uh, first step is to approve the agenda. Are there any alterations or concerns with the agenda as presented? Hear none, unless there are objections, I will take the agenda as approved. Agenda is approved. Let's move on to public comments. Are those in attendance or online wishing to make comment before the committee on items not currently on the agenda? Please virtually or physically raise your hand. Recording. That's not just me. <laughs> Okay, at this time, I see no one asking for recognition. We will move on with the rest of the agenda. First item of the agenda is the approval of minutes dated February 22nd, 2023. Uh, chair has no comments or revisions. I was not present. Yeah, but you could still <laughs> look fine to Don't me. Don't let that hold you back. Uh, <laughs> comes from me, you, how are you at the minutes in the agenda? Hi. That was oh, already <laughs> voting. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. With that, well, unless there are objections, I'll move with the minutes as approved. Hearing no objections, the minutes are approved. We'll move on to Agenda Bill 23033, Resolution 1637, designating the risk manager as the agent to receive claims. Uh, it, Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Let me back up. Let me back up. Before we get there, let's move to item number two, consideration of claims approval report dated March 13th, 2023. Uh, I have no immediate, I have some follow-on questions, but I have no immediate questions for the committee. I have none. Councilman Mayhew, do you have any questions? No questions. All right. With that, unless there are objections, we'll consider the warrants as approved and move those on to council. Hearing no objections, we'll move forward on those. Now let's go to Agenda Bill 23033, Resolution 1637. Need to get that out of my hand. Anybody want to talk this one or? Attorney Sturbank. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so the uh, statute provides for uh, claims to be delivered to a designated recipient. The council has previously uh, designated the clerk as the recipient of those. At the time that that designation was made, the clerk was also the city risk manager and was would be then the person who would coordinate with WCIA for the claims to be reviewed, approved, denied, settled, compromised, or what have you. Um, a couple uh, a year or so ago during um, reorganization and uh, in between city clerks, the risk management functions were transferred to the confidential legal assistant, deputy, deputy city clerk. And so now it's appropriate to transfer the, the recipient of claims designation to that person since uh, she's the person who coordinates directly with CIA, WCIA. So that's the purpose of this resolution. Okay. Councilor Mayhew, do you have any questions or comments? Councilmember Watton, any questions or comments in regards to this? Uh, sounds to me like an administrative cleanup. So thank you for bringing this forward. Certainly. All right. uh, I have no questions or comments. Um, unless there are objections, I'd like to move this forward to council and put it on the consent agenda. I concur. All right. You so okay, Jim? Did we lose you? Oh, no. Oh, can you hear me now? 
Yep, can hear you now. The system was not allowing me to unmute myself for a while. So now it's allowing me to unmute myself. Uh, oh, and I think I can turn on the video. Hello. So um, no, no uh, objections and no comments. All right, we'll move forward on consent. Move on to the next agenda bill. You shifted on me. Let's move on to agenda bill 23037, agreement for consultant service, IT management operations and staffing assessment. Who wants to talk this one? Possibly Jen can help out here if needed. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, over the last six months or so, IT has been going through some changes. We're looking for a new director. We engaged with Barry Dunn to help with some of the restructuring efforts at the end of last year. Um, after their initial uh, meeting with the city, discovered that there was some other areas of improvement and deeper dives that were needed in helping to fill some of these spaces, like a new director and management position that were opened up in this year's budget. So now we've reached a point where the um, balance or the amount will be past the mayor's signing authority in order to engage them in these services to help us staff the IT department appropriately with the new management and leadership that's needed. So this is a request to um, have the contract signed and brought to council in order to have it reviewed and approved to continue on services with Barry Dunn. So, <laughs> so it appears that we budgeted 38,000. This amount of expenditure exceeds that by about almost 21,000 is yes. what we're asking. Yes, and um, right now we have areas in the budget we're not using. So the director's position payroll is not, uh, director position is open. There's no payroll there for that. The new manager position that was budgeted. So the idea is we would switch the fund, essentially move the funds to cover it. Councilor Mayhew, do you have any questions? No questions, uh, no objections. So I got some questions. Yes. Um, so I, in reading this, it kind of broke into two things was, go get a new IT director and do an assessment of current staffing and is that appropriate? I'm, I'm okay with the first part. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that the second part may hamper whoever we hire as an IT director to appropriately staff and put the organization in as, as they deem appropriate based on their, assuming we get a great IT director right. that based on their experience and everything else, that that's the way the department ought to be staffed. So help me struggle with that. So, um, well, part of this is that there was the job classification study that was done last year. One of the things they found in neighboring cities and stuff, there wasn't the same type of IT structure or organizations to compare to. Our job profiles and things like that are severely out of date compared to the industry. And there's a lot of overlap and things like that. It's a very flat structure. So Barry Dunn has an IT government uh, branches, which we're contracting with, who have run municipal um, governments and things like that. And the goal is for them to help us restructure or come up with a structure we think would both support from both an operational and analytic standpoint, essentially. So it's giving a better idea of one, this is what our staff is doing today categorizing that against what the standard is for the industry today as well, and then identifying gaps. An example of one of those gaps would be right now, the team does not have any type of analytics support. So that's very common in IT departments. It helps determine what type of software, hardware, and other things the city would need to move forward, help plan with budgeting and things like that, make those recommendations and ensure that it's up to date. So that's one of the recommendations they immediately came back to us with. And right now we're very flat structured. So everyone reports up to that director. We realized last year we definitely needed a management role, but most IT like the help desk would report to one of our tier two people. They would supervise over some of that typically. So this is really just an overview, a comparison, and then a recommendation. The idea would be that towards the end, there would hopefully the new director would be coming on. They would be able to have this data and work and partner with Barry Dunn to ask questions, help staff and help rebuild in the way that we need to be going forward versus just coming in and doing what was today and what we have listed today, both in our bargaining agreements and job classification professional services. Okay. Oh, I still need it. Uh, so you have, you have no objection? I, I reviewed the proposal 
And for the $21,000 or so the city's investing, it seems like it's a reasonable approach. Um, we, we kind of, it seems like in the past, we've done things a bit ad hoc. And then what happens is we end up with systems that don't work as well as they should. And I think that this is a very small investment to make sure that we do the right things and it's not our job to do it, it's IT, but we've got to give them the tools and the administration, the tools. So um, I'm in support of this. Are there questions, concerns? I feel like there's something still sitting out there that I might be able to help with. It's large. No, I just, <laughs> I, guess I want you guys to really make sure that everything is not set in stone before that IT director comes in and may have a different worldview of how he wants to operate. Okay, so I don't want to hamstring that individual coming in, but I'm willing, you've heard my concern, hopefully you'll address that with uh, Barry Dunn and move forward. Jim, you have a comment? Well, now I have a question. So the more I'm hearing, the more questions I'm having. So this sounds like a relook at the whole org structure why would we not wait for the new guy and let him drive that? Like, one, why do this at all before he gets here? So one of the- And by the way, new guy, new woman, didn't mean that to mean a, a gender, but a, a new person. Right, no, so that's a fair question. And one of the big pieces is right now, there isn't the knowledge base within the city or experience to really figure out yet exactly what we need in that. So one of the things they're doing is helping us to determine who that new director is going to be and what skill sets needs to do that. The rest will be all data co coming in to help them reestablish a department or not reestablish, rebuild a department that's been going through that change. So the idea is that Barry Dunn is that guidance factor. They'll help us find that right person. They'll, they're actually part of the contract is helping us interview for that person, making sure that that person who comes in is qualified and at a level we need, and then that they have all the right resources to get started with. So it's nothing will be in stone per se, it's all tools and resources for that move forward. So, sorry, sorry I'm just trying to follow that. So we have an IT part department that's been functioning, been functioning, and we don't wanna, we want to hire someone who's going to hire someone who's going to hire them back. What is the problem we're trying to solve for 21? Like, I agree with Councilmember Watton. I don't have any problem spending 21,000. I'm just saying, why don't we spend it when we've got the person here to support what they're trying to do? I sort of don't understand now the sequence of what we're doing. And, and I'm not clear why we're not just waiting for the new person. So our part A of the plan is to help us first find that person. So one of the first tasks is to help, they helped us rewrite the job description um, that HR will be using for that. They'll be ha helping through the interview process. Uh, that job will be posting hopefully here soon, and then will be engagement in the contract while that's going through. So they'll help and then they will be there to support this new person coming in with an understanding of that while helping rewrite to a standard the second part of our structure. So we're not currently structured, as I said, in a way that aligns with the industry today and have the same tool set that most resources of the side would need. So they're going to do that work. So that person does not have to come in and do that initial work. They can if they want. I mean, I would, I, sorry, this is more of an opinion. Let me move away from that. But that would be a resource to understand that one, we can rewrite all our job classifications so that our individuals, we have those right tools, their jobs align with what the industry has, that work is done, that goes and works with HR on that piece. We understand where the gaps are. So a gap analysis would happen in skill set. So that new director coming in does not have to take that time in an area that does need help, support, and improvement within the city to sit there and do those types of analysis. It'll help with capacity planning. So that's another piece that's a big deal when they come in. They already have talked to the other departments and stuff like that, helping us idea what number of projects and things like that out there. 
So these are all things that, yes, a new director could come in and take the time to do this, but their time, honestly, from our speaking with Barry down the analysis we did at the end of last year, would be better served in really leading the team and getting to focus on building back that team, redoing our infrastructure, planning, guiding, and delivering the overall goals that the IT team needs to support to help guide what the city needs. So this is more of a providing the tools for when this person comes in here for things that yes, they could do, but honestly, their time would be better spent doing other things and having these resources done from them from a company that could help support them. So so chair, I have no objection to this going to the full council. I vote, I will vote against it and I do not vote. So please don't send it without uh, with a council with a committee recommendation because I, I vote against it. I'm for spending the money, but not until the new person is on board. But I have no objection to it going forward to full council. So, uh, all right, let me tell you where I'm at at this stage. Um, again, I broke this in my head, this broke up into two statement of work. One, go get that IT director. Two, uh, help define and start to flesh out the rest of the organization to do that. I trust that staff has heard the concerns here and they will do those in the appropriate order. Um, I have no way of finding out. The only way that I could assure this is to break this up and just have get the director, then do the staff as two separate actions. And I don't have a desire to do that. Um, so, but for discussion's sake, we'll move forward to council. We'll keep it off consent. Uh, let's, in the meantime, uh, take a, let's read this and see if after a second read, the concerns are still valid, or if based on the explanation, the second read, uh, it all makes sense. Okay. All right. So we'll move this forward. We'll keep it off consent. Pardon me, Chair. Oh, yes. May I, I, I've got a different, maybe a different perspective, and maybe it will sway Council Member Mayhew. Um, I think that we got the, the order switched. I think the order is let's do the assessment, the gap analysis, and determine what the needs are, and that will drive our director selection. And secondly, and that is given the, the flux of the IT industry, especially in private sector right now with massive layoffs, if we were to have this in place, therefore, our pool of applicants wouldn't be necessarily public IT, but also private. And some of those people may already live here and that we can have a roadmap so that they walk in on day one, they know exactly what's expected of them and they know where the gaps are and they know where to go out and, and hire those people. And I'm gonna to defer to our HR director, Ms. Ferguson, because does that stand a reason within the context of this contract? Uh, Chair? Um, it does stand a, stand a reason. Um, the, the, the recruitment is starting. Um, we've finalized the job description. Barry Dunn has done a review of that position description. And so we finalize that and uh, we're starting tomorrow. Um, and so we expect to, to see um, a positive interest in the position. Um, and we, we expect to uh, expedite. Uh, one of our tactics in this, the, the tough hiring environment that we've experienced is that we have in place um, immediate screening um, so one of the things that we'll be working with Barry Dunn is that if we have a number of applicants, we're going to quickly screen them. We're not going to, you know, wait until this application period is over. Um, we start to um, understand and, and look at the look at the candidate uh, that have applied. So that that is our that is our process, and that is what we're looking to do so that they do come in um, before this this study before this work is done. Um, and it does, it's similar to, uh, it's my understanding, the in 2018, uh, the city uh, entered into a consulting agreement with Clark um, Nubber and did uh, a review of finance, uh, the finance department. And so this is similar to that uh, in understanding 
where we uh, where we had gaps where we needed to make improvements uh, and the like. So uh, we we do feel that that getting that person in is important so that they can then uh, uh, carry out components of the study that they have something to start with and it is guidance and so if there is uh, a difference uh, a different direction that the director would want to go then then that is um, something that they would you know be bringing forward to the administration um, and uh, you know then we have that conversation about you know what they think differently from uh, perhaps what Barry Dunn comes up with assessment. I'm comfortable moving forward, but yeah. uh, just clarification that these things can happen simultaneously or, or they could be overlapping. When would the total project be anticipated being done is probably in this agreement. Yes, it's uh, end of May. Yeah, so, so yes, simultaneously. Okay. All right, we'll move forward to non-consent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, let's, uh, I don't have any attachment, but the finance administration work plan update. Any information in regards to that? So at the next FNA meeting will be the uh, council chambers AV update. We have a new um, proposal, I guess. Uh, we're going to be reviewing it with staff tomorrow, and then we'll uh, create the agenda bill and bring it forward to FNA on the 21st. 21st. And then after that, on the 4th, there's a AB to rescind a resolution on the personnel policies. So that's the only things that we have so far. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, review draft of city council agenda for March 13th. It's in your package. Uh, again, we'll have roll call, pledge of allegiance, agenda approval, hearings, and presentations, appointments. We will reappoint uh, to the Planning Commission, Sequoia Valley Hospital, State of the Hospital presentation. We have waste management annual report. Seems like we just had that. Uh, Approval of city council minutes, approval of claims, solid consent agenda. We have a vehicle trespass ordinance, which will be first reading. Um, we can take agenda bill 23028, yeah, 028 uh, as consent item. So you can move that up in the agenda. All right, and after the ordinances, we'll get into committee, public safety of present, no agenda bills, community development, no agenda bills, parks, public works, we'll have one remaining agenda bill of agenda bill 13034, resolution 1639, early purchase authorization, Centennial Fields play equipment. Uh, no questions or concerns there, that is more just, it's good news. Uh, good news that the staff is proactively working, working the costs on his, and good news that we're moving forward on the uh, all inclusive uh, playground. Uh, finance administration, we have the two agenda bills we just discussed, uh, except you can move agenda bill 23033, resolution 1637, to mark that as part of consent. Uh, then we'll have mayor's report, commission committee liaison reports, department reports, and are we going to have a closed executive session? Not Can we have a council meeting without a closed executive session? <laughs> no. Nope. Right. no. Okay. We, we Should we leave it on there just in case? Yes, please, because I'm waiting for an answer in response to some conversations that were initiated following the last council meeting. So I don't have any reason to tell you one way or the other right now, but leaving it as a placeholder. Okay. Can. There's a pop up well, placeholder. And then we'll move to adjournment. Uh, any questions or comments? Sure, sure. Thank you. Under number 12, could we make sure that we have a bulleted item for the King County Regional Law Safety and Justice, just to make sure that it's visible for everyone else? The um, Chief Phipps and uh, Officer Butler um, are going to join me 
on the call on the 23rd to discuss um, the activities here in the Valley to help bring some, some attention to the work that Ms. Butler is doing in the community. So, did you catch that? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. I had a hard time going back. What was yeah, the, what was the no, bullet? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Let me yeah. know. Long explanation. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Unless your objections, we'll take the council agenda as so noted as approved and move on to council Monday. Um, personal, please be aware I will be out of town come uh, council meeting. Uh, uh, Councilman Watton, if you will act as introducing the agenda bill still left on our I will do my best to to channel you I may zoom in but even then I'd rather you do it okay. here in person than me trying to do it on zoom okay. Okay. those are big shoes to fill no they're not uh <laughs> not by any means uh all right with that I believe we have come to the close of the agenda for FNA uh chair all right, unless you're, oh, wait a minute. Could I make a uh, staff introduction? Oh, gosh, I am sorry. No worries. I meant to give you an escape clause and I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Director Ferguson would like to do an introduction. Here, pro tem for heaven's sake. Oh sorry. man, I apologize, we could have got out of here. <laughs> um, well, well, we'll make this short and sweet because we, we kind of like this. So I wanted to introduce Krista Hines. So she is our new management analyst in finance and human resources. Uh, Krista brings a lot of experience in um, support. She's been in public administration for quite some time. Uh, just to let you know, she has hit the ground running with starting work on a very comprehensive onboarding program. Um, she'll be uh, leading us in setting up training and certification uh, programs. Uh, we'll be working on ethics training uh, coming up for staff and for council. And then also uh, um, uh, the ERP. We are moving into uh, some of the modules. So we're moving into the human resources, the human um, capital management, that's payroll, that's HR. Um, Chris has a lot of background with that kind of um, dashboard set up and with that back end um, on web websites and applications. And so um, also when we get, uh, 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 geared up for strategic planning. Uh, she'll also be uh, intricately involved, but I just wanted to make sure that you all met Krista and uh, really pleased that she has decided to join uh, the city of Snoqualmie. So thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. Any all right. Comments? <laughs> Krista, right, any comments? Um, I'm just very happy to be here. I followed Jennifer from another city, and I am <laughs> very happy to be part of this. I will be resurrecting our wellness program, so I'm expecting everyone to participate. And um, I look forward to working with everyone. Great. Fabulous. Thank you. Welcome. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Krista. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Thank you. I apologize. I meant to have you top of the agenda. Yeah, All right. Any other agenda items? If not, uh, are there any objections to adjourning? None. Hearing no objections, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Okay, we're finishing a half hour.